Hey y'all, it's your girl. Um, so we're going to be talking about planks today. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what form of exercise you do, whether you're doing yoga, Pilates, uh, CrossFit, weightlifting, body weight movements. Um, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. At some point in your working out lifespan, uh, you're going to run into planks. So we are going to break down planks today. We are going to talk about high planks, low planks, forearm planks, uh, the benefits of each. We're going to talk about the proper way to get into a plank um, and actually some of the ways to activate some muscles that you didn't think you would be activating in this particular pose. Um, so let's just dive right in. So we're going to start with the traditional high plank to begin with. Um, so when you're coming into that traditional high plank, you're going to have your hands right under your shoulders. You're going to take your legs back behind you, straightening out the legs. All right. And this is pretty much the position you're going to be in. You're going to be up on your toes. Your legs are going to be up. Your knees are going to be up off the ground. Your hands are going to be right under their shoulders. And that's pretty much the, uh, the position. So just some things to keep in mind while you do this is that when your knees lift up off the ground, if you can engage your quads, that big bulky muscle up on your thigh, if you can engage that, it's going to make this uh, just that much more beneficial for you. Um, so one of the ways that you can think of this, if you don't know how to engage them um, just by thinking engage your thighs or engage your quad, um, you can think about lifting the kneecaps. So when you get these quads firing up, your kneecap is actually going to lift up just a little bit. So you can think about lifting that kneecap and that's going to make your legs engage. It's going to make your legs now work a little bit while you're doing this, which is a nice big benefit for it. Makes it more whole body, total body. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. We're going to focus on engaging the quads. So hands go under the shoulders, legs come behind you. Go ahead and engage those quads. Nice. So the next thing that I want you to think of is those arms, right? The upper body. So we're actually going to engage the arms a little bit more than they already are, right? Crazy. You're going to pull yourself forward a little bit. So that doesn't seem like a very big thing, but that little movement right there is actually what gets most of your back and your arms engaged in this. And most people don't think to do it because it's not natural feeling, I guess. Um, and it makes you work a little bit harder, and who's trying to work harder while you're doing a plank? So when you do this, you really want to think about just pulling the upper body forward, pulling the elbows in and back, and you're going to focus on your shoulder blades and you're going to feel them kind of travel down the back. So the shoulder blades are going to travel down the back, the elbows are going to turn in a little bit and pull back a little bit. You're going to feel your whole back start to light up. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the muscles doing what they need to do to hold you up. Same thing is with your quads. So we're going to go ahead and get in that one more time. Hands are under the shoulders, legs come back, go ahead and engage the quads, lift that kneecap up. And then we're going to pull ourselves forward, bending just slightly at the elbows, pulling back, and there you go. So I really always cue that pulling back with the shoulders. Um, for any of us who actually have trouble with pull-ups, that is a great exercise to get yourself building and ready for pull-ups. It's going to engage the lats, it's going to build up the uh, muscles right around those shoulders. Uh, to help protect your shoulders, whether you're doing yoga and you've got sun salutations, you want to protect those shoulders, whether you're doing pull-ups and you want to be able to pull yourself up, you want to be able to build that strength in your shoulders. So really just remembering that really small movement, just pulling the shoulders back when you're in plank, it's really going to make all of the difference. So your high plank, you're all the way up, okay? And when I say all the way up, I do not mean elbows hyperextended. For those of you like me who have uh, joints that can hyperextend or are hypermobile, uh, double jointed, whatever you want to call it, um, for those of you who can, you know, let your elbows come all the way forward like that, you really don't want to do that. Um, so once you get into to these hyperextended or hypermobile joints, um, your body starts to rely more on your skeleton to hold you up than on your muscles to be able to actually do the work to get into the position that you want to. 
So rather than locking out the joints and letting yourself, you know, just kind of hang out in that skeletal hold, we really want to get the muscles working. So when you do your plank, coming into position, you're going to go ahead and pull yourself forward. All right. So notice how here my arms are kind of straight. I'm going to let you know I don't feel anything in my arm. What I do feel is a little bit of tension in my wrist. I bend my elbows. Now I can feel this in my triceps. I feel it in my back a lot more and my wrists are not hurting compared to this. So just making sure that we're not locking out the joints, keeping just a teeny tiny little bend in that elbow. You notice I wasn't bending all the way down to like a low plank, but I also wasn't all the way up hyperextending the joints. So just keeping those in mind, you want to Make sure to engage the legs if you can. You want to be able to pull those arms back a little bit, engage the back, engage the arms if you can, and remember to keep a little break in the joints, okay? So that is high plank. High plank is the one you will see most of the time when you come into a class. Most people just know plank, um, it's the push-up position, um, it's a very familiar spot for a lot of us. Um, high plank can also be used with just about any kind of exercise to make it just a little bit more intense. Um, during my days as a personal trainer, I used to do that regularly. Um, you know, you want to make your, your rows a little bit harder, you go right into a plank, and then you can row from here, right? So you just start rowing. So anything that you want to do, um, that you want to make a little bit harder for yourself, or that you want to add a little bit more attention to your core, um, just flip it into plank. And if you're having trouble figuring out how to get the exercise you want into a plank, um, just shoot me a message below and I will help you out with that. All right, so after high plank, you've got what you'll see when you come into a beginner's class. So when you come into a beginner's class, most people aren't gonna throw you into a plank. Planks are kind of hard, <laughs> in case you didn't know. Um, so planks are extremely hard. A lot of times when you come into a beginner's class, they're actually gonna put you on a forearm plank. So let's demonstrate. Forearm plank, instead of being up high like this, you're going to just bring it down to the forearm. So it's the same basic idea, right? Our elbows are going to be under our shoulders. Our toes are going to be curled behind us. We're going to engage the quads. And honestly, a forearm plank is going to give you almost the same exact kind of benefit as a high plank would. The difference is that you're not going to be putting as much stress on those joints. So if you're doing your high plank all the time and you notice that you really can't get the elbow bend down, maybe you should come down to the forearms because otherwise you're going to put a lot of stress on the elbows. You'll probably end up putting a lot of stress on your wrists. One of the things that uh, yoga is actually known for is joint injuries because of those kinds of things. Um, so I know these aren't you guys aren't all just yogis. Um, just learning the basic form. When you start a new exercise, you want to make sure that you get the basics down first before you jump to the next level. So making sure that you come to your forearm first when you're in a beginner's class or when you're first starting something. Come to the forearms, do the forearm plank, really learn the position from the core and the legs down. And then once you've got that, then bring the upper body into it. Then let yourself press up all the way and kind of mess around with where your shoulders need to be, where the arms need to be, um, but give yourself the time to grow. So start with a forearm plank, fairly simple, just let your full forearm rest down on the floor, and then once you want to press up, then come to that high plank. Another thing that forearm planks are good for are anyone who has arthritis um, or tennis elbow. Um, if you have, oh, now I can't think of the other name. But anywhere where you have a, or any time that you have an injury to your wrist or to your, to your forearm or to your elbow, you can come down to your forearms for that plank. It's really going to make the world of a difference for you. It's going to lessen your uh, long-term injuries. It's going to heighten your ability to get stronger quicker. It's going to heighten your ability to keep the rest of your body working at the same pace that you're used to without putting additional stress on whatever injury you have. Um, so I know forearm planks a lot of times are seen as like, they're just for beginners and I know what I'm doing, I don't need that. 
give yourself the ability to take a step back and do the easier exercise right before going forward. So those are the first two. We've got the high plank, we've got the forearm plank. The last one, for those of you who want to push yourself and challenge yourself every day, <laughs> there's low plank. So low plank, you're going to come from that high plank and you're just going to bend your elbows like you would a push up. So starting in that high plank position, hands right under the shoulders, feet behind you, engage those legs, pull yourself forward, and then bend at the elbows, taking it down about 90 degrees. And there's the low plank. You can hear all my creaking. <laughs> So a lot of you in yoga will know this as a chaturanga. Um, if you don't practice yoga, you can simply call it low plank. Um, so in low plank, you're just engaging those arms a little bit more. Um, you're coming down into that push-up position. And when you do this, you're doing your push-up position with your elbows back. You're going to do what's considered a tricep push-up. So when you do this, you're going to squeeze the elbows into the rib cage and come straight down. My dog goes upset. Okay? So a lot of you who've done push-ups before, you may be used to letting your elbows go out. It's a lot easier to do it that way. It brings it a little bit more into the chest. You're more than welcome to do it that way. But for a traditional, regular, um, low plank, you're going to want to squeeze those elbows in. Same idea as when you're doing the high plank and you're just pulling the lats back, pulling the shoulders down. Elbows come in a little bit. All right, so it's the same thing when you're doing that low plank. You pull the elbows in and bend forward, okay? If you let the elbows continue to go out, like I said, you're doing a different movement. Um, different movements are bad, but if you wanna get the position, you really wanna try to squeeze the elbows in. Um, if you wanna work on push-ups, you're more than welcome to let those elbows go out and work on your push-ups. <laughs> so those are the three kinds of planks that we have. We've got the high plank, the forearm plank, and the low plank. Um, so in those planks, you can also drop the knees. Right? So if you're in high plank, a lot of times I see people getting into this and they can hold it just fine. But after about a minute or so, they get tired. And we want to hold it, we want to stay up here. You let the knees come down. I guarantee you, you'll have a lot of success. Instead of making yourself overwork and try to hold yourself up in this position that you can't hold, and you start shaking, and then you start to drop the hips, and then you get into this weird little thing where you're like just waiting for the teacher to say it's all done, and you're just sitting there like this, and you're really not doing anything anymore. <laughs> so when you start to feel weak from a plank and you feel like you can't hold it, instead of letting the hips drop and just wishing and praying that the teacher tells you to come out of it quickly, let the knees drop, keep those hips up, and just continue to hold. This right here, this position right here will give you a lot more success, a lot more strength building opportunity um, than letting your knees stay up off the floor and slowly letting the hips sag until you found yourself in this weird back bed and you're just like, please, let me out. I know that was a little dramatic, but not really. <laughs> um, so those are the three types of planks. In the high plank and the forearm plank, you can go ahead and try to do variations such as the uh, side planks. You can't really do a side plank in a low plank as far as I'm aware. Um, <laughs> net chaturanga. But for a high plank, going into a uh, side plank, fairly simple. You have your hands directly under the shoulders, legs behind you, everything's similar. Find your plank. So the only difference here, bring your hand to the center and then roll onto one side, arm comes up, and you've got yourself whoop, your side plank. And that works on either side, right? Other hand comes down, bring it to the middle, roll. If you're doing this from a forearm plank, Bring it down, but the same idea, all right? So starting with that right arm, put it in the middle, right? Let your arm 
come forward, all right, don't try to let your fingers continue in that straight line. Let this come kind of perpendicular to your body. Roll on the hips. There we go. Same thing on the other side. You're coming from the forearm. Turn that arm perpendicular. Roll the hips. And there you go. <laughs> so those are my little tidbits for you on planks today. Um, I have a video on suicide planks. If you scroll back, I think about two years ago, um, I do like a little bit on how to do suicide planks and then how to get from a suicide plank into a suicide plank with a twist. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks.